What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Good X Gaming. I am Jackson. We are back with Hive Swap Friend Sim. In our last adventure, we had made friends with a wonderful artist in their mountain of trash. And now we are about to move on to our new friend who looks very, very tiny. You walk with a purpose, don't have a purpose, blah, blah, blah. Wanshi Adyata. Okay, here we go. Hey, now that you've gone and thought about the concept of purpose, you might as well make one up for yourself. You turn your walk toward the book hive. A handful of your friends hang out in there, and there are a few rooms that are generally pretty danger-free, so why not? It's a little difficult to make yourself walk past the spookier rooms, but you manage to avoid the siren song of the brain room once more. Your destination tonight is the room you usually watch your teal friends do homework in. It's understandable, after your off experience with Tirona, why this is their neutral meeting ground. Unfortunately, a casual stroll through the stacks uncovers no friends at all. Damn. You consider trying out a higher stakes locale when, wait, you see a shoe peeking out from one of the bigger hexagonal book hole things. Shelves? It really doesn't maximize space to have shelves shaped like that. Whatever, if you get caught up trying to make paltry shit like troll bookshelves make sense, you'll drive yourself to madness before you can figure out if this shoe belongs to someone you know. You walk toward it and the shoe is revealed to be on the strut pod of a troll whose head is barely peeking out over the book. And, nope, a jade, but not one of your friends. Whoever it is, curls up smaller in the hexagon, burying her face in deeper into a scribbled journal of a cullable wriggler. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, yep. It's not the most inviting posture, to be sure. The polite thing to do would be to keep moving, probably, but you feel a little off about that. You gently nudge your foot into hers where it still peeks over the shelf and ask if she's okay. It'll clear your conscience, if nothing else. The book lowers. I'm great. Just going on a journey through the imagination through some classic literature. Nothing to see here. Aw oh man, it's another kid. You know young trolls have to handle themselves as much as older ones, but as well acquainted as you are with the facade of pretending you're exactly where you're supposed to be, you get the feeling she's not exactly telling the truth. So, you're equipped to help. Plus, it's not like you haven't been befriended a few tween sweep equivalents here on Alternia already. You successfully didn't get murdered by Amicia, and you did a passable job befriending Tirona and Caraco. Though, sometimes you wake up shaking, the remnants of, a brain where, of dreams where you failed them on a loop in your brain, where they, Oh! Hey! Hey! There's an acknowledgement. Another one, at least. You shake, your, shake that horror from your mind and try to look as non-threatening as possible. Not that it's particularly hard for you, as you speak. Wait! That's interesting! What the fuck, guys? Why is all of the people who die young? Why, why, are, why are you always killing off the young trolls? What the fuck? Okay, ask her if Bronya's around. Uh, did she come here with someone? Bronya, maybe? You know Jade's her age aren't really supposed to be out and outside the caverns. Oh, I see. You're a snitch. Once she out? Did she just ooh-ooh at me? With that, she tucks her legs up against her and rolls out of the shelf with the agility only youth can manage and takes off between the stacks. You chase after her, but wherever her next hiding spot is must be better. Eventually, you give up. <laughs> youth roll! <laughs> Why am I yelling, by the way? Ask her if she's seen the brain room. You get the feeling she might need some help, so you ease into it. Maybe she'll open up a bit as you talk. You tell her this book hive has a gallery full of brains and jars, if she wants to go check it out. <laughs> I'm not make. I'm not doing it, guys. I'm not doing the, the fucking what's that face and noises and all that. What's a brain? I want to see. She unfolds herself from her hiding spot, brushing invisible dust off her skirt as she stands up. She rocks back on her heels and cocks her head, her locks bouncing against her shoulders. I'm Wanshi. Also, I know who you are. If you were wondering, I wouldn't go wandering off with just anyone, quest for brains or not. I may be only five and a half sweeps, but I'm not stupid. What does that translate to? I don't know, because I think eight sweeps is around teenage. I, I don't. She seems less afraid, but she's still got a nervous edge to her voice, so you try to be a force of calm. A real motherfucking Glade plug-in of Zen, sticking up the place with your chill vibes. You walk towards the atrium, making small talk on the way. You apologize if you made it seem like she didn't look like she belonged here. You're just not used to seeing young jades outside the caverns. She side-eyes you like she's weighing the implications of what you just said. Okay, I see there's no use trying to fool you. Oh. I may have done a small jailbreak. Oh, do they not have enough books in the caverns or something? She brushes you off in favor of her own question. Of course we have books. You didn't answer me before. What's a brain? Oh, right. You round the curve of the room and point in the window. Think pants. 
On her tiptoes, she peeks into the bottom of the window. I've never seen one up close before. She tries the door handle, but it's still as locked as it always was. She looks at you expectantly. Well, can we go in or what? A surly-eyed guard starts to not so subtly watching you, drumming her fingers on the handle of her mace. Ah, Globes. You were trying so hard to be cool and approachable that you fucked up and forgot that this room was off limits. Taking a hit to break and enter is, well, it's pretty much par for the course, actually, but it's not what you meant to be doing. Ah, nah, you saw it. Looking only. And now you're done. Great, time to move along. Ugh, lame. Why she doesn't pick up on the danger behind her, even with your hurried speech? You change the subject to why she broke out of the caverns, if not for more books, and start walking, hoping she'll follow you. She doesn't. Oh, I was trying to get to BeastCon. It's a convention for all kinds of cool stuff, but I want to go for the soldier pr Yep. My fanfiction is pretty popular. Are you fucking kidding me? It's a Warrior Cats reference. That's... Ugh. That's a series I don't really know, because it came short... It, it, I was outside the age range when it came up. I was... Uh, it, it wasn't popular during my time in school, and by the time it became popular, I was really into Terry Pratchett, and never got around to reading the Warrior Cats stuff. It seems interesting. Not my thing anyways, so... However, I do will never forget the fucking my brother, my brother and me bit and Bramble Pelt. I have a lot of friends go friends. Uh, I have a lot of fans going and I thought maybe I could make friends with some of them. But I don't know where anything is out here, so I got lost. She takes a breath and a step, finally, but then stops and clasps her hand together. Oh! The guard starts walking. You eyeball the exits all the way down the curved staircase. You can make it, but you can't just leave her here to make, take the fall. Why don't she keeps talking, oblivious. Linnea is always complaining about how you're everyone's best friend and how you know so much. Complaining? Do you know where the con is? We could go together. The guy gets closer. You gotta make a decision. Fast. Save. So, before we continue, uh, sorry about that. Before we continue, we should, uh, consider this. Uh, up until this point, all of our text has not has been regular capitalization and phrasing. But these are all in caps. Now, normally it wouldn't be that big a thing, just be a weird formatting thing, but in uh in, I remember in Homestuck that um, when somebody input commands into different things to either control, interact with, or monitor others through whatever console they had at the time, it would always come out as caps. Now, Combine that with the fact that we had that white text on black background earlier, and there was one character in particular in Homestuck that used white text and spoke in... Did they speak in all caps? I don't know. But they used all caps input to interact with others. Um, and uh, I'm starting to think uh, Doc Scratch might have his hand in more of this than I expected. Also, back there, do those brains have eyes? Uh, anyways, take her. Anything to get both of you out of here. Grabbing your hand, you say you know the way and make a run for the door. She whoops and scurries down the stairs behind you. A quick glance at the guard back at the guard taking your hand off her mace reassures you that you moved fast enough. Once you're around the corner from the book hive, you stop and catch your breath. Why stop now? Lead the way, alien friend. You wave her enthusiasm off. She's out of breath herself. She can hold her hoofbeats for a minute while you locate your fucking ba fucking bearings and think. You looked this con up earlier when Tagiri and Polypa invited you. They said it was fun, that the death toll was high enough to be interesting, low enough to be manageable, and that you'd be safe with them. Still, you'd chickened out. You guys changing your mind and going could be okay? You're definitely anxious about bringing Wanshi along, but it seems like she's hell-bent on attending anyway, so maybe the best thing you can do is be a responsible chaperone. A responsible chaperone. Plus, none of your friends make you feel better protected than Polypa. I don't know. Skill is pretty high up there. She kicks ass. Gorgo Map says it's not far. Well, you've dealt with plenty of dangerous clusterfucks before, so what's one more? Your wriggle Giles Corey of bullshit scenarios. Pile those some bitches on. Now, I'm gonna take a quick pause here. Not the game, but just to thinking. Another child, another possibly lethal situation. What do the Hive Swap devs and writers have against children? You bow as you gesture toward the sidewalk that will lead you toward the outskirts of town. Wanshi curtsies and follows your direction. 
It seems like she doesn't need you to come up with things to talk about. She's like a chatty sunflower, pulled toward the bright newness of everything she sees and chock full of commentary all about it. Wow, I've read all about moonlight, duh, but seeing it makes everything glow is totally different. Look at the dew on this prickle frond. If you get up close and look, you can see the reflection of your own eye and the moon's. You do as she does, and damn if that ain't a bunch of orbs reflected back at you, floating on the curve of a purpley green meniscus. Her curiosity isn't overwhelming or draining in the slightest. You tell her it's kind of nice, actually, to meet someone else who's experiencing this place for the first time. Yeah, the caverns are fine, but there's so much to see out here. Everyone else sneaks out. I don't know why it took me so long to try. No, actually I do. Getting in trouble sucks and I hate it. But it worked out! Here we are, experiencing it all together. Yeah, you can feel your anxiety lifting. Just a little. Just the part that's applicable to this particular situation. Still, that's a win. Walking and talking and taking in the night makes time pass quickly. You ask her how she ended up in the book hive to begin with. I snuck out when Lenero was supposed to be giving me some boring jade duty lesson, but with yelling. I don't have a palm husk, so I couldn't look up the con once I was away from my husk top. I just wandered till I gave up and found the book hive. That's a powerful nerd homing beacon she must have. Once she flexes. You know it. You smell what's around the corner before you see it. Having sized up your fair share of corpses in your travels, and had your hand in creating a few more, you know how to prepare yourself. Wanshi, on the other hand, you know the brooding caverns aren't exactly some diaper baby summer camp of innocence, but you are also not sure how much viscera she may or may not have seen. I am taking on troll slang at an alarming rate. No matter your respective levels of gore viewing experience, you both stop short when it comes into view. Whoa. She takes a tentative step forward towards what's left of a troll and then retreats, hovering close to you. Feels like you should keep moving, like you should avert your eyes and carry on or whatever the fuck before the drones come by to clean up, but she's still staring. Her steps, when she finally takes them, are soft. She crouches down and leans in with reverent scrutiny. It looks different, not in a jar. You wonder to yourself, as Wanshi shakily takes all this in, if bloodthirstiness is a trait only certain trolls are born with, or if they have it grounded into them by necessity, by expectation, by entitlement, or by fear. Next, because your brain is wired about itself, you wonder the same about humans. Wanshi doesn't look away for a while. You go over and put your hand on her shoulder, and she stands up and walks away with you. There is no ceremony to it. No placing of leaves with the remains, no prayer. I don't get... She doesn't finish her sentence. She takes your hand and pulls you back in the direction you were walking. She looks confused, like she's still trying to work out what she just saw. You guess it could have given her more time to... You guess you could have given her more time to process it, but... You're not sure comprehending death is really a thing that you can just, like, figure out in the wilderness with an alien in one night. After a few minutes of silence, you point out the call of some flat beasts, and she mimics it and smiles. Soon after, the pointy top tents of the Khan rise over the horizon. While she starts running, dragging you behind her. Oh shit, here we come! She's vibrating out of her skin. You're basically doing the same, though it's less an excitement thing and more an emotional whiplash thing. Whatever, you can work with that. Oh wow. I may have to take it back. You attempt to dig into the new vibe as you walk up to the gate. There are vendors and artists and trolls all around. It's like some unholy combination of an anime con and a renaissance fair, but with more people walking around sporting recently inflicted limps. In an attempt to not focus on that, you ask around for your other friends and ask her what she's excited to see and do here before her meetup starts. Does she want snacks? It looks like there are snacks. Yeah, I could want some frazzled saccharine fluff candy in a bit. But yeah, there's a lot to do. There's the collar bear riding, the cosplay competition, the... You cut her off. Wait. Cosplay. Boo! Cosplay murder. You cut her off. Doesn't she mean cosplay? There are trolls you think might be into cosplay, or maybe that's just like how some trolls dress. Yeah, there's that too if you don't want to get your class too bloody. Ah, oh, geez. There's the old nerves coming back. I really hope that bringing you here was okay. There are other young trolls roaming around, so you're probably good? You try not to think about the body you saw as an omen. There are bodies all over the place here on Alternia. You pull out your palm musk and consider your friends. You could message Polypar or Tagiri to see where they're at, but your thumb gravitates towards Bronya gri Bronya's gripe profile. Right when you decide you're being done, pocket your phone, a lot happens all at once. Once she starts to pull you towards a dude in a utilikilt, handing out flyers, apparently utilikilts are just universal. I own one, yes. Uh, I don't wear it much anymore. Uh... A bowel-rending sound rends, well, your bowels, and then a massive armored bear with huge beefy biceps hurtles through the grounds, hollering and grinding tents and congoers alike into a bent, splintered pulp. Wanchi fares frozen as the beast rampages towards you both. Oh no. She whimpers and looks at you, comprehension and fear etched into her features. You did this. You brought her here. You let this happen to her, and she knows it. 
you picture a hundred outcomes, a million. You want to work toward the end, you see, where you save everyone who hasn't already gotten squished, are elected grand human, and no one ever gets fucking trampled again. But there's no time for that one. Instead, you pick up Wanshi, give her a quick hug, and throw her into the closest bush. With what's left of your adrenaline-filled noodle arm strength, you reach for the handle of a katana from a vendor's rack and hope to fuck it's not only for display. You've never felt less prepared to take something on in your life. You've never felt sure, sure you've had to. In the end, it's no choice at all. The beast charges you, teeth bared and rainbow bloody. You hold your position, pinky and ring finger tight near the bottom of the handle like Tagiri taught you. When it leaps at you, tackling you to the ground, you bury the blade into its chest. The collar bear lays on top of you, the last of its life twitching out of it as it presses your life out of your lungs in return. Through your darkening vision, and under the furry dead weight pinning you to the ground, you see her. From the edge of the woods, eyes wide and watery with understanding, Wanshi picks herself up. Oh. Okay, well she didn't die, but it appears I did. Whoops. Well. Pretend to take her. You've heard of the con she's going about, talking about. You were thinking about going with Tagiri and Polypa anyway, but the list of activities seemed a little too dangerous, honestly. These past few months you've been up to your ass in close calls, and you'd quite frankly like to cut back on them. Including, you know, the one your ass is currently embroiled in. It makes not a committal noise as you work out how to tell her. Wanchi crosses her arms and leans back against the brain room door, which the guard really does not like, if her increased speed and mace brandishment is any indication. How do you increase your brandishing, like, just more aggressively? Okay, okay, yeah, you say, let's go right now. Your hype is contagious, even though you're completely faking it. She claps and bounds down the stairs. A quick tug at her wrist pulls her out of the mace's trajectory as the guard chucks it at you with, from above. It thuds mightily against the wall by the door, and you both make it outside, unbloodied. Checking behind you to confirm you're not being followed, you don't stop running until you're both safely around the corner. Wanshi giggles through catching her breath. Wow, that was a close one. Librarians, am I right? She grins and takes her hands. Can you believe we only just met and we're already having bonding hijinks? I didn't think making a friend would be so simple. I can't wait to hang out even more at the con. Aw, oh, her smile is a knife in your pusher. She's so excited about your budding friendship, and here you are, gutlessly hiding the fact that you have no intention of taking her from one dangerous situation to another. Maybe you would have agreed if you were in a braver mood, but you just don't know if you're up for more life or death babysitting adventures right now. What you should do, probably, is get her home. You don't tell her any of this, of course. Instead you agree, then check Gorgle Maps. The con is down the road to the left, the caverns are to the right. Leading her straight back home would be too obvious, so you take a meandering route. Everything you pass seems to impress her. The frankly bonkers range of architectural styles, the shivery carnivorous plants, the burned wreckage of someone's hive, and the flickering starlight all around. Now, I just realized something. I've, I've been having this thought as we went through this. I'm adapting alternative slang at an alarming rate. I am... I, I just learned the alternative language in, what, a matter of a week? And... I don't exactly remember a lot of what's going on. It's possible that I'm not actually human. It's possible that I might have whatever power is making you go through these loops and repetitions and twisting, turning timelines is fucking with my head, too. But, uh, not sure. We'll see. She is out. She is observing a worm crossing the sidewalk. Out here all exposed, all squishy and brave. When you point out a cool rock, eager to keep her wonderment going. Really? She puts a hand on her cock tip. You think we don't have rocks in the caverns? Try harder. She rolls her eyes at you, but she's still grinning. You accept the challenge and see her, tell her there's something she's definitely never seen up ahead. Bring it. You lead the way back. It's been a hot minute since you've been back over here. You're interested to see it again. Still, this side jump feels like delaying the inevitable. You know she's going to be pissed at you when she realizes you tricked her, but you can't help wanting to show off more cool stuff while you can. Anything to see that wide-eyed appreciation for any tiny new thing. What's left of your spaceship comes into view as you round the bend. There really isn't that much left to show off, but Wanchi is still into it. She runs over and starts inspecting the rubble. You wonder what happened to the freshly missing parts. Maybe Vicar has come back to scavenge more. Shit. Vicar. You haven't talked to that guy in forever. You've had to text him later tonight, but you still feel guilty. It's hard to juggle all these beautiful friends, even with how viscerally you crave them. You want to be good for everyone, but there are so many things that can mean, and you've never stopped feeling like you're treading water. Wanchi emerges from the hull, clambering on top of a black metal box and waving around some inscrutable rusty bullshit. Oh, there are so many fiddly little parts! Was this how- this was how you got here? She observes you for a second or two, then nods her approval. That's pretty cool. Any old idiot can wreck a spaceship. It takes someone with brains to break out of the Bourbon Caverns. Well, when you put it that way, you're completely right. 
She winks and pockets some of the pieces. Are you ready to keep moving? I don't want to miss the meetup, and it's happening right after horseroni jousting. <laughs> horseroni jousting. We should be ending pretty soon. You're not sure what to tell her. For some reason, the car won't leave your mind. You're sorry ass Hannes has managed to keep up with all the friends you did earn. Maybe it's for the vest that you're deciding to take her home. Her safety is more important than her liking you. You sigh and start to fess up. Even if she left here now, you're far enough and away from the con grounds that she'd miss it. You were afraid. Afraid to go. Afraid she'd run off if you didn't stick with her. Afraid of not knowing what to do next. You what? You made me miss our one chance to do something fun for a change? Just because you're too much of a scaredy purbies to go to a fun nerd party? It wasn't just that. You also wanted to keep her safe, to take her home. She stomps her foot in frustration, tears forming in the corner of her eyes. Are there just no good endings? Is me dying the good ending? Why do you think you can just make decisions for other people? Why don't you go home if it's that so great? Your mouth shuts, words gone. She follows your gaze back to the wreck of your only shot out and winces. I didn't mean, I know you can't, I just wanted. She sits down in the grass, defeated. You sit too, a ginger distance away. No, her anger is fair. God, this sucks. You hadn't meant to deprive someone of small joy here on this bitch of an Alternia. Yeah, it's the worst. She sighs and runs her claws along the tops of the spiny purple grass. After a few minutes of silence, she speaks. Too late to do anything about it now. I'm still super angry with you, but I'm glad you were honest, I guess. Even if it took you too long. I'm not used to people being straight with me. I feel like the older everyone gets, the more they lie. Or, at least the more annoying it is that they don't expect you to notice when they're lying. Not that I can super tell how old you are. Your alien physiology is a little inscrutable, but, you know, more or less. Your palm husk buzzes, interrupting your train of thought. You both look at your two new texts. Are you sure you still don't want to join? Things are beginning to get interesting over here, and you may have the privilege of seeing me at peak performance if you come by. Stay put. There's a collar barrel and loose. I don't want you on the already very long casualty list. You do a quick gorgle and holy shit! Social media is already on fire with the news of the con attraction getting free and mangling attendees left and right. The familiar ghostly feeling of a near miss shivers down your back. Whoa! Well. Her eyebrows pull together as she works through the images she's seeing on the screen and what it could have meant before her. She's still a little teary from before. I guess... thanks? Not that you did it on purpose, but I guess maybe it worked out okay. I do love not being trampled, but it still sucks that I didn't get to go make friends. You don't want to be too presumptuous, especially after all that, but... Maybe this day might be salvageable, new acquaintance-wise. Once she blinks back her disappointment and puts on an attempt at a smile. Maybe. Might as well see. What was she going to do with the new friends? Maybe you could make on your way back to the cavern so you guys could talk about soldier purr beasts or scary horse jousting or whatever else she wanted to do there. She stands up and crosses her arms, looking you over, her smile turning real. You think I got what it takes to roleplay? You stand up too. You're super cool with roleplay. You've been basically doing it since you landed. So what's the deal again, you ask as you start walking her home? Magic cats? Magic? What are you, some kind of wiggler? No, there's no magic in soldier pair beasts. She rolls her eyes at you, then hunches her shoulders, claws spread, eyes darting from bush to bush along the sidewalk ahead of you. Unless you mean the power of your own wits, the sorcery of all your senses aligning at once as you get ready to pounce, and hypnotic spell-like rhythm of your own push or beating in time with your praise. She straightens up and grins. That kind of stuff. Anyway, it's really fun. Let's play. She bounced back so fully. You get the feeling that not many people indulge her in this. It reminds you of your younger self, and your heart crunches up a bit. Fuck yeah, let's play. You mean heck. Heck yeah. Don't patronize me. Fuck yeah. Watch she giggles. Fuck yeah! Okay, so, little last you can be from the space cast. Let's call you Twinkle Paw. I'll be Wild Wisp from the Solar Glare Clan. She clearly seems to think you should be impressed or intimidated by this, but you don't really know what's going on, so you nod. Twinkle Paw. Got it. So you'll stumble upon me while I'm taking down a nut creature, scaring it away with your incompetence. Sound good? She peppers her walk with skips, talking up a veritable storm of world building. Her voice gets low and rumbly when she quits setting the scene and gets into character. Little one, what do you think you're doing sitting strut pie into our territory? You've made me lose my creature feast. What have you to say for yourself? Ah, oh, fuck, it's your turn. You, um, you didn't see where you were going. You're sorry, though. You know how hard it is to come by a good meal. Fool, you think me so poor, Tracker, that I am hurt by such a loss? I can find another. I find offense only in that you clearly do not respect the bond between hunter and hunted. You blunder in and interrupt the sacred rhythm of my fangs, its neck, or its claws, my face. Now neither of us can know who would have prevailed. Ah, oh, geez. You're, like, really sorry about your strut paws. You're constantly sticking those into other people's sacred dances. Maybe if there's more nut guys over there? Once she stops looking and gives you a withering look. Is that really the best you can do? No, you'll try again. Um... How dare this pervy beast accuse you of such a thing? Your intentions are as noble as the wild pusher that thumps in your, uh, bone cabinet? Wanchi bounces, hands and fists, grinning. A little over the top, and not really a starcast approach, but you're getting there. 
You practice finding your soldier's characterization sweet spot as you walk her home. You take the most direct bait route, but you let her stop to explain the pervy grooming habits, to breathe in the rotting perfume of a flower, and to appreciate yet another sidebrock bathing worm. Eventually, you reach the cave entrance you know. Oh no, many knives. And standing under its eve is Lanera, a very pissed looking Lanera, which uh, isn't your favorite mode for that particular friend. Where have you been? I said I'd be right back, not hey go run off and leave me to make excuses for you. Well I'm back now, so you can get over it. I know you won't tattle, you don't want Brony to know you lost track of me. Watch yourself. Lanera glares fireballs at her and turns to you, softening the tiniest of bits. Thank you for bringing the short one back. Do you want to come in? You appreciate her politeness, but nah, you should go and let the jades settle everything. Plus, you have another friend you need to check up on. Before you can say anything to Wanchi about how you hope she ended up having an okay time, she scurries off around the corner, calling back over her shoulder. Wait, I have something I want to give you before you go. So you wait. Lenara keeps looking at you, arms still crossed. You would better be glad she's okay. If she got hurt, I could never. I mean, I would be in so much trouble. <laughs> you don't have to call her on her secretly caring, because Wanchi comes running back with something in her hands, her hair bounding behind her. Here, read this, then maybe when you come back to visit me, you'll be, um, a little more informed about the Soldier Purpose universe. I only have one person to play with here, and he usually pretends he's too cool, like he doesn't absolutely love Purpose cast drama. She bows a little as she offers the book to you. It is tattered with love. It's my personal copy, but I think I can trust you with it, Twinklepaw. What do you say? You clutch it with your chest and tell her you will guard it with all the honor and Spitfire Starcast has to... Honor and Spitfire Starcast has to its hallowed name. Oh, it's really cute. Also, how and did I shrink? Or am I just that small? Fuck. Anyways, uh, that was really cute, and I like that ending. Anyways, that's it for this episode. If you like the video, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you want to make me a coffee, the link is down below. I'd greatly appreciate it. And thanks for watching. Later, y'all.